this is Hillary Lindsay, active yoga at your home, office, or your symphony, with my friend Melanie Alvey, who is happens to be pregnant. Mm -hmm. However, that's not a deterrent to her playing her violin. So today, Melanie is going to give us some information on things that help violinists, and we're going to try to solve some problems. Mel, yes. What sort of issues do you have in your practice, or what do you see in your students? Oh, that's a very good question. And yes, as a teacher, I do see a lot of violinists dealing with the same issues and a lot of the same issues that I've dealt with my whole life as when I was learning and studying as well. Violin is a very awkward instrument. It's strange because we're all on one side and not on the other side or even like other instruments like the piano or different things like that where you're putting all your effort in the same area or super lopsided and we have to figure out all these weird things to to bring some alignment back in our bodies. We're looking for symmetry here with Melanie. Mm -hmm. Melanie plays the violin, she teaches violin, and she's going to be a mom. Let's see what we can do for her. So Mel, let's start standing up. Okay. I've got a strap here. You know I like my strap for my musicians. And Melanie, you mentioned something to me earlier about wrists. Yes. Um, so we're going to put a little bit of flexibility into the fingers with this strap. If you don't have a strap, you can do it like that. I like the strap because it gives you something to brace against. So Mel, put your, your hands are going to come in like this and then flex there. Your hands might be a different size than mine, so let's see. So we've made a loop in the strap, mm -hmm. and then Melanie's going to interlace her fingers. Can I put it around this way? Yes. Mm -hmm. They're at the base of her fingers. She's a teacher, so she knows to tell me to be more specific. Okay. And then she's going to press the palm of her hand open and stretch her arms forward. Mm -hmm. Now, she's pregnant, so her posture looks deceptively wonky. But we're going to ask for symmetry in Melanie, and we're going to ask her to draw up through her legs. And even though she's got straight arms that appear to be pushing forward, and they are in the fingers, we're going to ask Mel to pull her shoulders back and firm her arms a bit and we're going to make sure she's keeping a steady breath because it's yoga. Posture number one. Here we go, posture number two. So Melanie also mentioned to me earlier that her neck tends to get tight. So Mel, mm -hmm. we're going to do this stretch where you take your head to one side and then you're going to put your arm out. So take your, yes, and then take your right arm to the side and keeping your left ear towards your shoulder Begin to make your right arm exquisitely firm, fingers as well, and begin to bring this arm down towards the back side of your side. Our cameraman's doing it too. And when she's done, she's going to pick her head up with her left hand and relax her right arm. Switch sides, Mel. Okay. Turn and face me for Rob. He wants to see mm -hmm. a different, I think he wants to see your baby. <laughs> so go ahead and take your right ear to your right shoulder. Take your left arm out. Make the arm very firm. And let's do it a little faster for the camera. Slowly go down towards the back side of your hip. And when you get there, stay there. So the arm can continue to travel down. Down, down, down towards the floor. Now, before you move your head, relax the arm. Ah, now pick your head up. There you go. And turn and face the camera for us for a minute. Thank you. Nice work. Thank you. Aha. Uh -huh. Turn your, um, so Mel says that because she raises her left arm and she saws, oh, that's the wrong word. Why don't you tell them? She bows? <laughs> my, I use my bow arm with the right. Scalenes. Yes. And um, the, t the head tends to go this way when we play, or this way however you were taught. And um, yeah, as a teacher, I try to teach multiple placement of the head so you're not constantly locked into one position, which a lot of students and people who are learning tend to do. So this is- That's for horror stories. Yes, so this is a typical position when people are real still learning and having a hard time with it. So I try to with my students to relax and have an even head and be able to move any which way but it still is a lot of strain in this muscle in here okay so we're going to ask mm -hmm. Melanie to work her scaling with her own hands so Mel turn your head to the left until you can find that 
muscle that pops up on, uh, no, uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. This way? Yep, and grab that muscle. It's called the mm -hmm. scalene muscle. So she's going to pinch the top of it, and she's going to work her way down a little bit, and she's going to then find a taut spot, wherever it is, and turn her chin a little bit towards me, and away a few times, and she's going to look for some movement that feels like she's got a little bit of tug on those scalenes that feels pleasing. She's not looking to overdo. She's not a massage therapist. She's trying to gently feel where the tight spot is and by coming into it and away from it, release it. So she's feeling where she wants to. And then you can do this at home. And after this one, Mel, take your hand away and do you feel any, anything different now? Yeah, it feels a little more free. A little more free. So mm -hmm. you might try that at home as well. Um, while we're still standing up, I've like, got a purple soft block right here. And Mel, put it between your ankles, like so. Mm -hmm. The hips have a lot to do with the stability of the shoulders, the shoulders with the hips. We're going to try to line Mel up from the feet first. So press the outer ankles toward the block until you feel a firmness, a pinching, or a gathering of the outer hips. Mm -hmm. Can you feel that? Mm -hmm. It comes right from the legs, moving in, the thigh bones moving into the hip sockets. And now she's got that stability there and she can feel that stability. From here, I'm going to open this strap. I'm going to give her another exercise to do and this is for her upper back and her shoulders as well as her neck. So this is going to be measured about the distance of her shoulders, possibly a little bit more. The buckle is going to go, we can always make it smaller, so the buckle is going on the top side. I've made it smaller. <laughs> the buckles, the, the props are the hardest part of yoga. <laughs> the buckle is going on the top. She's putting her arms through here. This is going above her elbow, just a bit above her elbow, and she's going to put it on like a sweater. So arms up, tuck your head. She can do this herself, but I'll help her for today. This is slid and turn around with your back to Rob, okay? A little, for, yeah, forget the block for a second. Mm -hmm. Just turn and see that, and then give him your back. Okay. So she's firm the upper back. She doesn't even look pregnant from back here. <laughs> and then turn around now. Yeah, and all the way. Good. The block is getting reset. Okay. And now she's going to, what do you feel, Mel? You tell them. I feel, um... Even? I feel much more even. I feel more stable. Is it pleasing? Yes, it is. So she can press her head gently back. She can firm her upper back here. She's getting a sense of length and symmetry. And Mel, does it feel like you've got one shoulder blade closer to the spine than the other or one collarbone narrower? Can you, can you feel? Can you bring the shoulder blades more and more together or the collarbones more and more apart? Mm -hmm. And can you press your arms outward against the strap? Ah. How's that feel? Feels like I'm really stretching, but also strengthening the muscles in my arms. Okay. Better. You've shown them. They can do this as long as they want. Come on out of it. Okay. Now, we're going to take this block in between your hands like so. Put it between your wrist, and then take your arms over your head again. The reason I'm asking her to do this is she's just brought her shoulder blades together by pressing her arms apart. However, now I'd like her to stabilize by bringing her arms into the midline, so she's getting another sense of strength in her arms and upper back, another strength of integrity along the spinal muscles, in the ribs, and Mel, pretend you've got that block now and press the outer heels in and take a couple of breaths here. Great. And then take the block down and turn sideways to Rob. Show off a little bit. Mm -hmm. Take the block behind you and take it between your palms and press. This is not easy. Many of you will not be able to do that. She's pressing into the block and she's spreading her collarbones and she's firming her upper back again. And she's pressing her arms down where normally in her playing she's going up. So she's creating another sense of balance and symmetry. How does that feel? It's good. It's really hard. I'm it's really hard. On the muscle to keep your arms there. And it is. Mm -hmm. And she's doing a great job, but we won't wear her out. So I'm going to take <laughs> this away from you. Yeah. 
So Melanie, uh -huh. explain to me that the wrists also tend to have an interesting thing in violinists. The bow hand is very, very loose, and the hand that holds the neck? Yes, the neck of the violin. Is tight, is the claw. So we have two different wrists doing two different things, and we're going to fix them with one pose. So Mel, come on, come on down to your hands and knees. And she's going to turn her fingers towards her knees and put her wrists maybe on the floor. So lean way forward so you can do that. Don't strain yourself. You guys, this is a really, really sensitive part of yourself. Do not strain it. Do not force your wrists down if your fingers are down first. However, here, she's able to stretch her wrists in a really interesting way. Okay? If she was to try to sit back now and melt, imagine you're going to sit on your feet she'd be straining or stretching her wrists more. You don't have to do that. You just have to come right into this pose. On the hand that's very loose, Mel, imagine drawing the skin of the bone up into the shoulder away from the floor. And on the hand that's very, very tight, imagine pushing your wrist harder into the floor. So her left arm is descending and her right arm is ascending in a way. However, she's got the same symmetry in her upper back despite. How does that feel? It's good. It's a lot of um, stretch on my wrist and my upper arms. Is there anything you would add to that for your students that, that I have not thought of? Um, I don't think so. Okay, and now Mel, turn your hands forward. Okay. Um, actually, turn sideways if you don't mind to the camera. Yeah, and the hands on the floor. One more thing here. So I'm going to ask Melanie to imagine bringing her shoulder blades together and apart a few times. And as she's bringing her, and keep going, and as she does this in this movement often known in yoga as cat-cow, she's also going to imagine the movement of her collarbones coming together and apart. The shoulder blades go together, collarbones push apart. Collarbones come together, shoulder blades come apart. The shoulder blades come together and the sternum drops to the floor of the breastbone. The breastbone moves in and the shoulder blades come apart. One more time, and these are the different ways you can think about this positioning. Now hold the shoulder blades apart, Mel, and stay right there and stabilize the hips as if you have a block between your feet. And then if you will, stretch your left leg straight back and can you raise it in the air no higher than your hip. And here Melanie is stabilizing her pelvis and she's going to imagine hugging that block between her arms to stabilize her chest and her upper back. And now switch sides, Mel. Even pregnant, this can be done. Any body type can do this work, any violinist. And then take that right knee down. There's one more pose I'd like her to show you guys. Mel, it's Vashishtashana. Mm -hmm. Take your left leg straight back. Rob, can you see her back foot? Okay, and flip your heel down. Make sure that your right hand is under your right shoulder and it looks good to me. And then raise your chest and left arm up. Now I'm coming behind her because Melanie being pregnant may be a bit unstable. <laughs> I'll be the wall. How do you feel, Mel? I feel good. So she's drawing the right arm into the body and the left arm away from the body like she did with her hands on the floor. And come on down, Mel. So Mel, please do one more thing for me. This mm -hmm. is for the part of the body often known as the rotator cuff. Bring the elbows into the rib cage, fan the hands out, make the wrists very strong and straight, and then press the hands back so that the shoulder blades come together Keep the shoulders back as you release the hands slightly forward. Without moving the shoulder bones, take the hands back and forth a few times. Try not to move the shoulder bones. It's a small movement. Small movement. Take the arms back, very tight and small. Come in a couple of inches and back. Back and forth. Hold back there. What do you feel? I feel... Um a stretch on my wrists and my upper arms and a little pull on the, on the back of my shoulders. Okay, and let it go. Well, that's it for today. Can you think of anything else, Mel? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. So, from Active Yoga, Hilary Lindsay and Melanie Alvey, 
and baby Alvy mm -hmm. and Red the dog. Thank you for coming. This is yoga for violinists. See you next time.